The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen for your children to become amazing and successful human beings. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is... Hi, my name's Rob. I work in Key Stage 2 in a school in Buckinghamshire, and I've taught all the way from Year 3 up to Year 6. Hi, I'm Helen. Um, I am also a teacher in Buckinghamshire, and I'm currently teaching Mixed Reception Year 1. And today we are exploring what science we can teach with a retelling of Hans Christian Andersen's classic, The Little Mermaid. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for The Dancing Mermaid. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as an ebook or paperback illustrated by the magnificent Mario Coelho, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time. There are even some tips there for telling the story yourself and a whole heap of resources to go with the lesson ideas we're about to discuss, including any extra lesson ideas that we don't have time to fit into this podcast. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Helen Robb and the Young Mermaid here as we delve into some science. There must be plenty of science in this story, right? Yeah. Don't all rush at once. <laughs> 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 so much, it's literally overflowing with science. Well, I'll tell you what then, um, Rob, you can you can tell us what you found for ages 7 to 11 first. 7 to 11, perfect. Um, there are a huge number of creatures that live under the sea or in water in general. Mm. And to classify them simply as animals that live in the sea doesn't quite cut the mustard or mm. cut the tartar, maybe. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so part of the key stage T science curriculum is to do with classifying animals yeah. um, and effectively classifying them as well. So using the story, using um, images, using part of uh, a documentary about under the water, you could identify all the different creatures that you see mm. and then work out what they are and how we know that they're either mammals or fish to start off with because that's quite a confusing topic sometimes yeah it's quite a big one but i i think i'm i'm right in saying that there are more classifications for sea creatures than there are land creatures aren't there i can well imagine that and then you could bring in which creatures have a similar classification almost to land creatures so uh, like a, a lobster yeah Mm. is that going to be similar it lives in a shell so is that the same as a snail mm. pose questions like that so it would be that quite would be a, yeah an inquiry almost octopuses and spiders or octopi <laughs> and spiders so they're the same because they've got eight appendages mm. what would happen if you put an octopus on a spider's web yeah <laughs> <laughs> that kind of question yeah yeah do octopuses spin webs well, they both produce something, don't they? One yeah. produces the web and the other produces ink. ink. Yeah. God, they'd make a great team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating. Um, what else did I come up with? States of matter. Looking at the different states of matter, say solids, liquids and gases. Again, because there's an awful lot of water in this story. Mm. And water is one of the objects which can change reversibly between these states. Mm. Um, not everything can, but water does. I seem to remember... Chip, when you and I spoke about this last, we were mentioning uh, the boiling point of water. And if you put salt in your water, then it reduces it as well. Do you remember that? I don't. I'll, I'll be honest. Okay. Um, um, maybe maybe it's because I, I I don't usually put salt in my water. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're, if you're cooking pasta. Salt right, in your tea. Oh, that's right. No, that's, as soon as you mentioned pasta, it's coming yeah, to yeah. me. Yeah. So when you're cooking your pasta, <laughs> if you put salt in, it makes the water boil quicker. Uh -huh. And we were trying to work out how or why, but I don't think we found the mm. answer. And I still haven't found the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant experiment, though. Salt also stops, you use it to stop freezing, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Must be yeah, something about salt. Must be must be a related topic. Then. Yeah, yeah, sure, it must uh, be. It must be related somehow. Lowering the boiling point and also, yeah, yeah preventing things freezing. Yeah, there we go. Science experiments okay. one hundred and one. <laughs> Just be careful not to get 
boiling water on your children. Health and safety. <laughs> I guess this must uh, be why, you know, when the temperature drops below freezing, the, the whole of the sea doesn't instantly ice over. Yes, but rivers and lakes will. But rivers and lakes will, yeah. Oh. Something to do with the salt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Is there any part of the story in particular that you would use to, to explore the, the states of matter? Uh, that's a very good leading question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say the end of the story. <laughs> okay. Um, when the mermaid uh, becomes part of the foam in the story, mm. now, that's part of the the waves. Say, so I would start talking about it then, maybe. Uh-huh. And if Denmark can be a bit chillier than the United Kingdom, say, so luckily she is in salt water. Otherwise, she would just have frozen. And mm-hmm. then, I guess, yeah, she she is a solid, and and she transforms into a, a, a liquid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could you could make little ice sculptures um of of a mermaid couldn't you in order to to explore that particular moment of the story mm-hmm. you um, i mean you could even link it back to back to denmark and back to hans christian andersen and do them in the uh in copenhagen there's a statue of oh, the yes. little mermaid isn't there yes yeah so oh, you I design your statues that. to look like that and then mm. see how quickly they melt <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah brilliant cover it in salt <laughs> and see what happens this is an activity to do during winter when it's you know cold enough outside, uh, or, or summer, I guess, if you're in Australia, when it's cold enough outside for you, you to be able your, to your ice, your belovedly made ice sculptures outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> so Helen, then for ages four to seven, what science did you find for us? Um, so the first one is quite similar to to Rob's in that in key stage one, the children are required to learn to categorise animals quite simply in key stage one, mammal, bird, Mm. amphibian, reptile or fish. And I thought it would be a, well, I don't know which way around I'd do it actually. Because my initial thought was to start with, um, here's the mermaid, how do we categorise her? But actually, Mm. until the children have that knowledge of what each category is, they're going to struggle to categorise the mermaid. So I'd probably start with learning about some different creatures found under, on top of, above in the sky, the sea. (laughs) Mm. So seagulls included because we need some birds. Um, and al- albatrosses i love albatrosses so big <laughs> um so um yeah start to categorize them learning about what the different categories mean and then have a little discussion a little debate and actually going back to the bog babies that have previously been mentioned i did this with bog babies hmm. i said to the children so you've learned all about these different categories which one does the bog baby belong in? And that was really interesting because it got them to use their knowledge of the categories. Mm. So you could do the same with the mermaid. Where would you yeah, categorize absolutely. a mermaid and why? So you're getting them to justify, you're getting them to justify their ideas and use their previous learning. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's how I'd approach the categorizing the creatures. So not, not in so much detail as in, in key stage two, but just using those initial, initial groupings. Mm. And then yeah. I thought we, it would be a lovely opportunity just to learn about the the habitat of the sea. And um, later on, another time in geography, I was going to talk about the coral reef. But you could explore the coral reef as a habitat here mm. and the kind of creatures that live in it and how they're supported by their habitat and how they're adapted to their habitat. I like talking about simple adaptations, things like like a shell, things, things in key stage one, those kind of simple adaptations yeah. seemingly simple not really simple nature is incredible but the, <laughs> the ones with easier to say words um, but um it's it's interesting hearing you talk about that straight hot on the heels on classification because there are so many different ways that mermaids have been represented and i, I can't remember is it in harry potter that they have gills yeah. Oh, yeah. um they're quite creepy which, in harry potter <laughs> yeah which which suggests that they are more fish than mammal yeah doesn't it yeah um whereas you know that i suppose more disney representation of a uh, mermaid might suggest more mammal than fish because so it would oh, be, well, i don't know it'd be interesting to get as part of that yeah to get some of these different representations mm. um for the children to have a look at do they have gills do they do they have fur <laughs> all of these things yeah. um yeah that would be that would be interesting then again, having said what I just said about, you know, the, the Disney one being more like a mammal, you, you don't see them having to go up for air. So presumably they have another method of, of breathing that is um, not a gill. 
but more fish-like. Goodness me, that could be a really interesting <laughs> investigation. That'd be a whole other discussion. Yeah, yeah. How, how do mermaids survive underwater? Mm. Um, be a whole project. They are their own classification. <laughs> would, you put, would you Mer. put them in the same group as uh, a centaur? Do half. centaurs breathe underwater? Well, no, but they're half humanoid, half animal, aren't they? So that gotcha, would be yeah. that would be a whole other discussion. You know, when mm. you're categorizing creatures, chuck a centaur in there as well and see what they do with that and whether they <laughs> immediately put the put the centaur mm. and the mermaid together or whether they say, actually, oh, but the centaur's got fur and four legs and a tail. Um <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great fun. <laughs> it is gonna be great fun. <laughs> and like you said earlier with your non chronological reports, with things like this, there would be no right or wrong answers. So your children can take complete ownership of it and yeah. have loads of fun with it while still engaging with the yeah. language of classification. Yeah, still so. using their knowledge, still using what they've learned about it, but actually not there's no right or wrong. And I like those kind of activities. Definitely. Can give children confidence that might not usually feel confident. Exactly. That's all we have time for in this episode, folks, and indeed this week. Now, we'd love to hear your thoughts on everything we've discussed in this podcast, so please find us on social media using at Teach Happily or leave us a review using your favourite podcast app. You can also use social media to let us know if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, because we would love to help. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world, so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable and enjoyable all at the same time. We'll be back next week so the young mermaid can help us plan lessons in geography, history, art, religious education and physical education. But right now it only remains for us to say cheerio and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio! And we, and we hope, hope to hear your story soon! soon.